You are listening to the Rewrite the Rules podcast. We are your hosts. My name is Beth. I'm Natalie. And I'm Harriet. Rewrite the Rules podcast releases a new episode every Monday. And we're all about helping you achieve a happier and healthier relationship with food and your body. We're real people with real life experiences. So you can expect us to be keeping it raw and real in each and every episode. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to us on whatever podcast platform you use and share the love with a friend that you think will love this podcast. Now, let's get on to the episode. Hi everyone, welcome back to Rewrite the Rules. This is part two of episode 27, where we have our beautiful guest Leanne on, where she is courageously sharing her journey with binge eating, her struggles with her body image, and how she overcame that and has now found peace with both food and her body. This part of the episode is so inspiring. So we absolutely hope that you will love it. Again, we are going to give a trigger warning though. We are still talking about binge eating, the concept of being overweight, gaining weight and losing weight. So if this is something that you think will trigger you or you're just not up for listening to this today, then please click off. That's absolutely fine. We have a ton of other episodes in the library. So if you fancy listening to something different, that is totally, totally fine. If you are up for listening to this episode, then we hope you love it as much as we did. And on to part two. The next thing that I kind of want to ask is like, I know that we went traveling together. I know that you struggled so hard with your relationship with your body and with food. And especially being in a country like Australia, it's like, it's even harder when it's hot. And Mm. when you wanted to wear the things that you wanted to wear and we were, you know, living with this massive group of people going out all the time, I struggled with my relationship with food at that point because you're drinking, you're eating all the time, but you went home and then you ended up not coming back out. So I ended up staying there for six months longer and you stayed at home. And I know that Part of that was, or would you say it was because of how you were struggling with your relationship with food and your body? Because I know that when I came back, I saw this change in you in which I felt like you'd got a better grip of it than I'd seen that you had before. Yeah, definitely. Like That's what I was going to say to you. For me, the biggest turning point, so when we went travelling, again, I was quite overweight still, but I think I didn't let it stop me, essentially. And again, my relationship with food wasn't good then. I think the month before I actually left to go travelling, I stopped eating because I thought, oh, maybe I can lose sort of like a bit more weight. And, you know, Mm -hmm. so I completely stopped eating. I think I was eating one meal a day. So even before I went, I was, it wasn't great. And then when we was out there, I think it's the first time, I don't know if it's being away from home. I, I can't explain what it was that made me, it heightened it a lot, a hell of a lot. And even though I had you there, Nat, I felt so, I felt really alone because I felt like no one else is struggling like with their body. Um, I felt really self-conscious a lot of the time. I think as well, it's it's little things like I'm very pale skin, so I'm not tanned. So whenever we would want to go out, I would want to put on loads of fake tan. Little things like that that made me feel self-conscious. I wouldn't want to expose any, any of my, you know, I wouldn't want to wear anything that made me look bigger and again, it was really hot. And I remember Christmas Day, um, we lived with, we was in a house with about 20 people at the time. And it was amazing. It was some of the best times that we had. Yeah. Um, and some of the people that we met, we were really lucky to meet some of the people that we did. So we all went down to the beach on Christmas Day. And that was a really, really sort of big thing for me. Like, And again, people take it for granted, you know, like whacking on a pair of shorts and, oh, let's all go to the beach. But that for me, the anxiety that, that it filled me with, it, it was awful. Like, and I thought, oh, I'll buy a sarong and I'll wear that on the beach. Mm. But every, everyone sort of stands in the sea and like has a beer. Like, you know, it's not that kind of, I, I, I sort of thought, well, how am I meant to stand in the sea without a sarong? And then I forgot it. We got down to the beach and I'd forgotten it. So I had like a mini panic attack and one of our friends went back to the house with me to, to get it. And I ended up, you know, I wore it and then I ended up taking it off. But again, I felt, so I felt like everyone was looking at me and I know sometimes that's projected on you project that onto yourself because it's what you think so you think other people are staring or looking or making comments great day but again it was I almost felt like I shouldn't have been there because I didn't mm. I was different my body was you know I was again like I said severely overweight and 
I just felt like I stood out like a sore thumb and there were times where Nat would say well let's do this let's go here and I, I just didn't have it in me to want to do it it was a struggle for her to sort of say well let's do this and I I didn't want to do it I didn't want to I, I think it I, I felt to myself that like, I can't keep going on like this that I'm so unhappy and it was the first time I realized I was so negative negative mm. with, with ev- every aspect of life I was so negative and it's only now that I look back and I think bloody hell how like I must have been so difficult to be around I know your friends support you no matter but you know when sometimes you realize how different you are now as a person to what you were mm. I can't I honestly can't believe how negative and miserable and ha- I was and I always think I must have been so hard to be around mm. which is quite a hard thing to say well should we ask really, should we ask you know, Nat that because I, I think this is quite a unique perspective because I've also been that person who I've been into the beach with like a t-shirt and trousers on because I've forgot my bikini and you know always on a diet and can't do anything and I wonder what did my friends actually think so now at that moment what 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 was your opinion what did you think in Australia I think it was difficult because I so wanted and we did we had the best times it did get to the point where I was like I so wanted you to take every opportunity and I knew something wasn't right. It was a lot different from how you'd been the previous day. And in all honesty, I never saw you as negative before that. I think our relationship as a, as a friendship was, I just always wanted to be that encouragement for you. Do you know what I mean? Like when yeah. we went on nights out and you didn't want to wear something, I just always saw it as that. It was almost like our roles. I never saw it as... Oh, yeah bloody hell like she doesn't want to wear this when we go out. you always wanted to go out that like I might add but it was always the fact of when we were like first able to go clubbing it was I, I don't want to get my legs out and it, I just always felt like oh, oh, that's me I'm just here to just encourage you I never saw it as a burden I never saw you as negative but when we were in Australia I saw a change in you towards those end months where I thought this isn't this is different you know, yeah. like, but it never got to a point where I was like, I was so wanting you to stay. And that was for my own selfish reasons. And, you know, might I add that we had a m- massive falling out when you ended up not coming back. But mm. it was probably like, a, I think friendships go through so many things. And we've learned that both of us together, that like, you end up wanting different things and you need to we we were so like on the same path thinking that we wanted the same things whereas you had something that you needed to do and you needed to stay home and solve your relationship with food and how you saw yourself and I needed to let you do that because I I couldn't bring you back I couldn't there was no amount of encouragement that was going to make you stay so I feel like it's making me a bit emotional (laughs) it was it was like the change in you that I saw then was sometimes just absolutely broke my heart, especially like I know that we went traveling towards the end of Bali. And there was one really major, massive like breakdown that you had. And I just thought, this isn't the, the you that I know. And, you know, I'm going to say towards the end when you explain everything, but this is why I think that your story is so important and amazing and why I'm so glad to have you on because I just think no one has really gone through what you've been through in terms of your whole journey from me knowing you at school up until we're 30 now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's so it's sometimes I find it really hard to listen to that because I think like me now, it, it I find it frustrating that I almost wanna that that who I was then, I almost wanna shake her and say, like, come on, like you can do it and and I'm just, uh, it's good that where I am now, that our experience in Australia, I think I wouldn't be who I am now without it. But mm-hmm. for me, sometimes when I when I look back at the pictures that we had and the things that we did, it's quite painful for me to look no, back no, sometimes. Yeah. It was amazing. It was, it was really life, it was life changing, but it was also quite um I felt like it really sort of like saying it. I was the lowest I could have ever been. There was no way else. There was nowhere else to go but up from that point. Do you know what I mean? You know when you sort of think, God, I'm I'm at the lowest point I can be at in terms of like my mental health, my body image. Like I was probably the biggest I ever was as well when I got home. Mm. Which again, I know like Nat touched on that like we did fall out and it was it was a really hard time because 
I arranged to come home for a friend's wedding actually and I was home for a month and the plan was always I'll go back I'll go back and within that month when I was home it was like I packed I packed everything to go back and again I felt really in denial about um, everyone was like, oh you're excited to go back and for me one thing I did learn was I, I need routine but like I really struggle without routine without you know that structure and when it was time to go back I, I think I said to my mum I said I just feel so what's the word I I feel that I've got nothing in me I've got nothing left to give to do it and I said I'm so unhappy like in the way I am the way I feel I said it would be it was tough because I felt like it would be wrong of me to go back for for Natalie because I'm not doing it for me and it was tough because it was a selfless thing that I had to do and I know it was but I didn't want to break your heart and I did but at the time I thought and it was the first time I really thought right I need to really do something for me and I yeah and that that's what that was quite difficult because I feel like we always do things for each other as in you know we're always there for each other and I think it was quite tough for you to hear that I didn't want to go back but it wasn't personal you we know that now you know I think when you're younger you sort of take things very personal and you think well why don't you want you know why don't you want to come back this is an amazing experience I just felt like I didn't have anything in me I, I was so exhausted and tired of sort of pretending to almost feel happy and I felt like I should be happy I'm on the other side of the world seeing things I've never seen before experiencing things meeting new people I could have been anywhere and I was just miserable I I felt so miserable inside and it it was taking up a lot of energy to try and pretend to be happy do you know what I mean that's and it was when I got home that was for me when I thought no enough's enough like I've been doing this for too long Mm -hmm. it's been since I it's been about 10 years going in this cycle of chasing constant chasing trying to feel happy and yeah wow yeah Thank you. Oh, didn't see that coming <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh me no oh, like my. like I know I, I thought that you would get emotional speaking about it and it is because no one likes to remember how bloody awful that they felt but I think it's also very important you did something for yourself whereas when you're young and you're friends you think why don't you want to do what I want to do like why like we always do what each other want to do like if I want to go somewhere surely you want to go there or if I want to do this but looking back on it you can't regret or be regretful because you wouldn't be where you are now that everyone has their point and I think for you mm. that was your point of change yeah. so like now I don't know if you can explain how did you find where you are now like this piece that you have because I know when I came back and I was then at my worst with food I literally was absolutely gobsmacked I was like what it blew my mind I was like because I felt like we switched I felt like I I never saw food in any other way than food. And I got to this point where I was obsessed with it and I was unhappy with my body. And I felt like even now, like you are like my sort of person that if I'm ever having like a funny moment or, you know, I'm feeling, down. yeah, you bring me down or you speak sense. And like, yeah, I don't know if you can explain how you sort of found that. So I think when I got back, when I think I spoke about, well, earlier I mentioned that I went, you know, I'd done a lot of slimming groups, etc. But for me, the one that I found the most successful for me was Weight Watchers, purely because it was a point system at the time. So it was very much, you could eat what you wanted. So there was no restrictions, which was a good thing because it was, there was no one telling me you can't have that. It was just to keep it within your budget. So for me, that was really, really good in helping me to control what I was eating. So from that point, when I got back, I sat down and I said to myself, again, as I've mentioned, my biggest issue was being overweight. And then in hand, that came the binge eating. So I said to myself, right, you're going to be patient and you're going to do it as best you can. I wasn't at this point confident enough to go to the gym. So I said, if I don't want to work out, I'm going to stick to the food 100%, not restrict, but I'm going to stick to the plan, have what I want, etc." And that's what I did. And I lost a pound a week. And I was I said to myself, you'll be pleased with a pound a week. A pound a week is, is good. And you'll be pleased with it. And it's healthy. It's maintainable. It's sustainable. And I did that for, a, I think, 
nine months and I lost a pound a week every week stuck to the plan and in those nine months I didn't binge once and I didn't realize that I didn't binge if that makes sense I didn't realize because I, I just stuck to eating three meals a day and snacking and I didn't feel the need to you know go and eat a packet of biscuits or don't get me wrong in there were certain times and points within that where I didn't buy biscuits because I knew that they were the trigger and I didn't want to be tempted but that again I knew it, I, I did get to a certain point where I felt like this is that isn't real life you need to be able to have a pack of biscuits in the house and you need to be able to have two and have two and then put them away because that you know what I mean that's normal with a cup of tea you have two biscuits or you know whatever so then I started to introduce foods that I completely sort of avoid even bread bread people think bread's the enemy it's not because I feel like you did it differently because you deemed weight loss to be I have to cut out food groups Mm. but what you did differently was in actual fact you knew you had to eat more because those were going to stop your binges yes yes overall in your day overall in your day you had to have meal times contain all food groups because the cutting out of certain food groups was leading you to binge and have this imbalance with food. Is that what, like, in your experience? Because yeah. I know that was with me as well. Yeah, 100%. So a lot of the time, I think, when you so you wake up in the morning, you think, oh, okay, I'm just going to have a banana for breakfast. And then you think, because, you know, I, I, was, I ate a lot yesterday, so I want to kind of pull it back a little bit. So you have a banana for breakfast, and then you might have, oh like chicken salad for lunch and it used to frustrate me because then I'd think no like if you know this was going forward so I'd wake up and think no like have your normal breakfast have your normal lunch and then have your normal dinner then you're not you know I I never binged because don't get me wrong I still used to go out and drink but I would obviously choose a, a better option than having sort of cocktails and stuff but then the next day I wouldn't say to myself right got to cut back I would just eat normally and I never binged because, like you say, you do have to eat more. If you're going to be full and you're going to feel sat- satisfied with what you're eating, why are you going to feel the need to binge? I know some yeah. for some people it's a lot deeper than that. But for me, most people binge when they're hungry or their sugar's drop because they're not eating enough. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, my God, what can I eat? Because you haven't eaten enough in the first place. Yeah, so yeah. instead of sabotaging yourself thinking oh I'll just have a banana for breakfast have a big bowl of porridge and then you'll probably be full till lunch yeah well you're but- exactly right because people biologically the urge to binge comes from your blood sugars dropping so dramatically mm. because your your brain is like they're starving so you then have the urge to eat as much as possible so you can get those blood sugars back up so the, the most helpful thing that you can do after a binge is go back to eating normally so that you can regulate your blood sugars again and then you won't have that urge to binge so yeah you're exactly right Leanne yeah, oh yeah and I do have two more questions I feel like I've got so many questions that are in my mind but one question that I want to ask is do you feel like your relationship with because I know that me and you were very focused on I want to have this body I want to lose weight and I want to eat in this way to have a body that I deem to be, you know, a body that I can show off, acceptable. Do you feel like in finding balance with food, you have steered away from that and you're not as focused, but in your opinion, do you feel like you found your way in having more acceptance of your body and knowing it fluctuates and... Yeah, do you know what? I don't know whether it comes with personally for me I feel I do feel like it's come with age as you get older and I've listened to a few of your episodes previously where you say when you get older and you look at the bigger picture it's so much more important to make memories and spend time with family and when you go out for nice meals and you you're actually genuinely excited when you see a menu and you think oh my god I'm gonna get that that looks amazing and you have absolutely no thought of well how many calories is that or should I really be eating that and I think for me, that is a lot more important than constantly worrying. And I, and I think you get to a point where it becomes tiring. It becomes, for me, it felt tiring. It was like I learned to make peace of it when I felt like because I introduced exercise, exercise made, made me feel really good after, you know, doing a workout. It wasn't for weight loss. I used it to, to, be, to be stronger, to work out, be stronger, be able to lift heavier, I didn't then associate now I don't associate exercising with weight loss 
or working out because I've eaten bad I exercise so they're two separate things and I think that's quite important as well I know they do go like hand in hand in hand if you want to lose weight it is beneficial to work out but it's not essential I did it without working out I think um a lot of people find acceptance from being able to separate eating nutritiously and exercising from wanting to change your body it's like I know that I want to move my body and I want to eat in a certain way that doesn't have anything to do with how I look it's how it makes me feel both physically yeah yeah, both physically and mentally I think once you've you've really like understood that distinction and it's clicked I think that's where you can really start to find that peace and acceptance and oh my god it's so freeing isn't it (laughs) absolutely that that yeah again I think that's what I was trying to get at when you don't associate like you say I I'm quite not lucky but I genuinely enjoy eating fish meat you know white meat white fish um veg I love eating vegetables um it's not a chore for me I genuinely enjoy eating it not because I feel like I have to eat it and it I do feel like it makes your mind a lot clearer nothing to do with weight loss do you know what I mean and yeah Definitely. I feel like we've all we've always been programmed to think well if we want to lose weight we have to eat healthy no you can just eat healthy if you don't want to lose weight it doesn't matter you can eat yeah. healthy and you know that sort of thing so if you don't associate working out with guilt working out I think is, is the right word you know that when you work yeah. out you feel guilty if you've if you just want to work out to feel good then I think that's good as well that helps mm-hmm. you feel free with it because if you don't want to work out you think oh I can't be asked today you don't have to yeah, yeah. exactly Oh my gosh, I love that. And just one more question I have, because I know that a lot of people will probably hear your journey and your story and they'll wonder, was there any points in which you've really struggled and you've maybe slipped back into restriction or you've really slipped back into focusing on I want to look a certain way? Have you ever found that on your sort of journey and trying to find balance with food? Yeah, I, I, I'll i be completely honest. Like, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm cured. You know, I don't think for me personally, I don't think you're ever you ever fully get over something. I, I think it will always be within you. I think it's about control. And you can tell yourself, well, actually, no, I don't want to make I don't want to do that. I don't feel the need to do that. Um, but I really struggle with body image still not as bad as what it was in the past because I'm not severely overweight anymore and I'm a lot healthier than what I was and I make good decisions and I'm, I'm a lot more educated now on what I need to do to feel good you know but I do really I mean you know now I really struggle with body image like my biggest hang up will always be my legs and I think sometimes I just tell myself you know I was born with a body that is short I'm short so I'm going to struggle with my legs anyway um, I carry a lot of the weight on my bottom. Sometimes it's just genetic. So now I try and focus on areas that I do love about my body. I love my upper body. I love my waist. You know, still little things like that. I think it's important. I wouldn't give that advice to you and say, well, don't focus on, you know, oh, God, I'm totally going off topic one minute. No, but no, no, that's good. You, mean, you wouldn't give that advice. You would tell me to focus on what I do love. Yeah, I think yeah, it's important 100%. to, like, it's, it's good to love yourself. You should love yourself. Like, I, I've never hated anyone. But I genuinely hated, and that's quite a strong word, but I hated who I was, like, who I was and my body. I despised it. I couldn't bear looking at it if I saw it in the mirror. And I think now, like, you're allowed to. If you've worked hard for something and you should look at yourself and think, yeah, do you know what? Like, it's not all, it's not always about, you know, I know the media, we all look at everyone's body and think, oh, I wish I had a body like that. And I know when Love Island comes on every year, every girl sort of, depressed because they think oh god look like I don't look like that but sometimes I just think well you might love your upper body someone else might not love their upper body like you might love your hair someone else doesn't love their hair there's always going to be something that you have that someone else wants as well like naturally like someone's almost oh I love that like I love your your bum you've got a great bum or do you know what I mean? That sort of thing. So I think very easy to focus on the areas that you don't love. And I, I I despise my legs. That's me being completely honest now. I feel like no matter how hard I work, I'll never have legs up to my ass because I'm short. So it's going to be more difficult. So now I just try and focus on areas that do make me feel good, you know. But one thing think... that you do do as well is that that before would have completely held you back. You are a lot more accepting. I think you should give yourself a lot more credit because, you know, you talked to me about it and, like, you, for instance, you went on a holiday and you were like, I can't wear shorts. And then you were wearing shorts. 
and that like, you don't yeah. let it hold you back anymore and I think that is how I know that like you are so much more accepting of your body and you know you you are like you you're a completely different person to how I knew you were you know when we were younger or when we were traveling sometimes you'll say oh you know go it's Christmas I've eaten a lot I don't I don't care and before yeah. it would have been like <laughs> Oh my god, I need to get this weight off. And like we don't talk to each other like that. I feel like the way that we talk to each other, we never say, I'm so unhappy and I can't go out next week unless I've lost weight. Whereas we used to be like that. Now we're like, I'm gonna wear something that makes me feel comfortable. And yeah, yeah, I, I may not feel like I did two years ago, but our experiences and our memories that we make are so much more important than how we look yeah Yeah, I think it's sometimes very easy to get hung up on oh well I don't look like that but like you said I think sometimes there are ways around it you can find something that makes you feel like you know more comfortable or don't wear something tight fitting if you know that you you're a bit set say if you you know it's your time of the month and you're like oh I'm so bloated and uncomfortable it's that you can you can work around it and like Nat said I think it's important not to miss out because I've been there, missed out on yeah. on things because I just can't bear the thought of going out. But I think now, well, you've got you've got to be able to push through it. And then the more you push through it and the more you say, no, I will. There's always a solution, always. I think it becomes a lot more easier. Definitely. When it, you know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. I love that. And my final question for you, Leanne, is... Yeah. So we we have a lot of listeners who are currently struggling with binge eating. This might be a hard question, but if you could give them one piece of advice based on your experience, what would that be? I love that. Oh, that's a really good question. I would say don't be so hard on yourself mm-hmm. and love yourself. Because no one can love you the way you love you. Yeah. And it's important to give yourself so much self-love. And don't be too hard on yourself. It's a process. And to have patience, I think that's the biggest thing is be patient with yourself. It You're trying to change the way you think, your mind, you, you know, and it, it's okay if you have hurdles along the way. And just love yourself because no one else will. You, you need to be kind to yourself, definitely. And don't worry if you mess up. You can always, always get back on it. And it's, you know... It's never too late either. You haven't messed anything up. The fact that you still come back and you still keep trying, that's what's more important, definitely. Oh, my gosh, I love that. I know. (laughs) Oh, honey. (laughs) Honey. I absolutely bloody love that. So, yes, we just want to say, as our first ever guest, thank you so much because it's such a brave thing opening up and letting us hear your story and I just want to say for me when I was struggling you were like my inspiration and I 100% mean that I really don't think I could have got through it without you yeah I mean I'm just so proud of where you are today because all I ever wanted all I ever wanted was for you to find happiness and peace with food and with your body and I really do feel like there isn't anything in me that worries or thinks that like she's not doing it in the right way or she's still being restrictive or there isn't like so that's just the no, main thing it, for me. Thanks, Ben. It's amazing to know that as well. And you know, I've always had your support and it was lovely coming on and sharing. It's yeah. great. Oh, we're so and grateful. I, I, just hope, I just hope that, you know, whoever's listening that they can take something from it and hopefully, you know. Just if you are struggling, just don't ever give up. And and I think as well, it's important. You're not alone. But mm-hmm. there are other people that are going through the same things. So don't think that you're the only one that's going through it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Leanne. This was amazing. No, thank you for having me. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, yeah, just thank you all for listening. Yeah. Um, we really, really hope that you enjoyed this first episode of having a guest on and yeah I just loved you and Leanne meeting yeah I'm so oh, honestly, it was lovely it was, a, it was amazing I'm just so glad we did this and I knew it was going to be an amazing episode so I'm oh, that again really great I was buzzing at the beginning and buzzing at the end <laughs> I just can't wait for everyone to hear this you know I can't it's... wait to hear it I want to hear like what I sound like <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Leanne, we're going to have to have you on again soon, I'm sure, because you've just been amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so thanks, so dear. <laughs> thanks for having me. Of course, and we'll see you, lovely listeners, next week. Yes, yeah, see you later, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs>